What Drew's saying is, as a player, if I'm running around in the open world um, and I come across Bullet King, great. He's going to drop something for me. If I come across random dudes, no-name bosses, there's still a chance that you will get gear. Yeah, just okay? like in the 1 to 30 experience, right? Exactly. So yeah. you, can, you can get like, the best or relevant gear. Um, there's, a, there's a percentage chance to get that from yeah. trash mobs. Yeah, and that's... And that's not just in the open world. That's uh, pretty much in all the activities except the incursions. Not incursions. Right. Incursions, we block that because, yeah. 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 But the, the whole idea is that uh, we no longer want you guys to have to go through this activity that's going to take like 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, whatever, and only get the reward at the end. And then if you fail, it's super frustrating, it's super punishing because you yeah. invested all this time and you didn't get anything. Now, all the time you invest is that many chances that you will actually get something on your way to the end reward because you may get some drops during the process. Yep. So now it is possible to get loot from regular dudes or any kind of dudes in the open world. This is extremely good news for solo players and I'm happy to hear about this. This is awesome news. Nothing more to say about that. That's just great news. I'm happy to see that come back and I'm happy to know that depending on the tier of the world, you're going to get gear, whether it be in the dark zone, in a mission, or in the open world, you're going to be able to get gear to level you up for the next world through everything you do except incursions. Incursions, it's not like that, but I'm sure it's balanced somewhere to be okay. Do we want to talk about difficulty? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Yes. because okay. now we're talking about world level, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're basically, we're scaling things in two different levels now, whereas everything was kind of one before sure. uh, because challenge mode challenging sorry uh, we know uh, set enemies to level 32 yeah except in underground I think it was 33 yeah um, and heroic set enemies to level 35 we're getting rid of that world level affects the enemy level always yes always 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 yeah but we are keeping the difficulty settings of normal hard challenging heroic now heroic is only for incursions now yeah. so we're removing it from underground um, and we're removing it from some of the missions because missions, yeah. we didn't do anything special. We just move your mic a little bit. Yeah, sure. There you go. Oh, oh. What an Drew, intimate Drew, moment I know, that's right. camera. That's okay. Um, but yeah, we didn't do anything except increase the NPC level, which yeah. wasn't that exciting. And yeah, you're not going to get better gear by playing hard or challenge or heroic mode than if you were playing normal. Okay. You're going to get more of it. Okay. That is that's a, really, a big change, Okay, right? that's a really, really big change. So I'm level yep. 30. Yeah. Right? I'm a solo player that can do, you know, normal. That's cool. I'll yep. run through and I'll still get the best gear yep. relevant for that level. Absolutely. For, for tier 1. So 163. Yeah. Exactly. Right? And if I get good enough and I can do it on challenging, yep. I will get the same gear, just more of it. But All right. So like if I'm in a group, I could probably do challenging. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So just to continue with the player story. So you're 30, yeah. we said you're doing all this normal hard or challenge, or you go through normal hard challenge, or you mm -hmm. just yeah. farm normal, whatever, you get all these 163 items, and eventually you're geared up to close yes. to 163 gear score. Right. So then you get a notification yeah. that unlocks, and it says, hey, the next tier is available. Mm -hmm. You can switch to it anytime you want. You can stay if you want, and you can really optimize your build for 163, or... You can change the world level to tier 2, which is level 31 enemies. Yep. So again, the open world, level 31, mm -hmm. dark zone, all of that stuff, 31. Yep. And then um, you can get 182 gear. Yeah. But then right. you still get access to yep. all the difficulties, so normal, yeah. hard, challenging, but with yes. 31 enemies. So it is worth pointing out, though, that challenge mode will not exist in tier 1. It'll unlock in tier 2. Yep. And heroic okay. incursions will not exist until you reach tier 4. Okay. okay. Because that's the most hardcore content. Yeah. We want to kind of make sure that the players have completely geared yeah. up and nice. And so, just uh, regarding tier four, so tier four is the maximum. Yep. And that's where you get the thirty-three NPCs and the two two nine. Two two nines. Yep. Yes. Exactly. 
yeah, that's the other clear yep. thing to point out. There will be no level 34 or 35 NPCs. Yep, none. Gone. All right, so the gear score, as your gear score goes up, more tiers in the worlds will become available. And as your gear score goes up, you will be able to have harder difficulty settings. So if you play on normal or tier one, you will probably only have normal and hard, okay? Challenging and heroic and all of that stuff probably won't exist. Actually, tier one, you won't, you won't get anything. You'll just get normal, all right? More like you'll just get normal. Tier two, when you play on tier two, you have uh, normal and hard because you're in tier two. And when you play in tier three, you'll have normal, hard, and heroic. Or no, challenging. That's right, challenging. Heroic is the last one. You have normal, hard, and challenging. And then when you get to the last tier, tier four, then you'll have normal, uh, hard, challenging, and heroic. And then all four of those will be unlocked. Now, will you be able to do heroic on a lower level? I'm not sure about that. They didn't really say that, but they said heroic is only unlocked when you hit tier four. So we'll have to see how that goes. And yeah, if you're over by the time you hit 229 on the gear score, you should be able to do it uh, with a group. So we'll see how it goes. It's not just about solo players. It's also for group, it's the same. Yeah. Because since you get more rewards out of higher difficulty, as a group, you will probably not start with normal. You can directly start with hard. Yeah, or maybe absolutely. You can more yeah. quickly start doing challenging, so you will actually get more rewards by doing the challenging. Uh, whereas the solo player is probably going to have to farm normal and hard for a while before he can actually do challenging. So it's going to be slower for the solo player, but still he can achieve Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Or if you, like, on the other side of things, you want, like something that's too easy for you, that's fine too. Yep. Yes, you can de-rank the world. Yep. You Anytime want to go you back want. and play some really easy stuff. Yeah. Again, you'll get the rewards that are in that tier. Right, right. But that's cool. Yeah. So what does all of this stuff really mean? Basically, it means that it's solo players are going to have things to do and they don't have to feel like they're being forced into a group. That is what I'm taking away from this. If you are in a group and you are already at a high level, 1.4 doesn't really seem like it has a lot to introduce to you to get better. You may be able to get more stuff so that you can refine your builds and have more access to different builds. But other than that, is it really going to revolutionize the build that you have now? Depending on how mid-max it is, maybe, maybe not. Now, if we talk about the world difficulty settings, this is going to make it much easier to select a difficulty if you are a solo player. And it is going to make it a lot easier for you to be able to find exactly what tier level you want or that you need to be in to progress your character to get better gear for your upcoming builds. How does the difficulty work between solo and group players? How do you uh, change the difficulty? How's the scaling working there? When we go from normal to hard, yeah. uh, we basically change all normal NPCs into veterans, the purple guys, mm -hmm. yeah. and then we change all veterans to elites, the, the yellow guys, right? So we do that for hard mode, but then challenge mode, we spawn completely new um, NPCs, yeah. as you know, right? Like when yeah, you're playing... Yeah, you some of those challenges. Yeah, exactly, where you get the four heavy flamers and, and things like that. We keep that spawning, and most of them are elites and things like that. But what we are changing, though, is we're getting rid of the forced four-player scaling. Because our NPCs, yeah. um, when you play in a group, the more players you have, the NPCs get a little bit of a health increase and a yeah. tiny bit of a damage increase to compensate for greater players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we're removing that, though. So you can now play challenge mode in one player and you won't get those extra health increases on the NPCs yeah. or that extra damage increase on the NPCs. So now talking about something very important, solo versus group play and how difficulty changes. Now, before we had the difficulty um, kind of go up for NPCs if you had a larger group and they got more 
um, health and they did more damage. Now all of that stuff is going to be pushed aside. It's no longer going to exist. But some of the changes that they did make, like if you play, let's say, normal versus challenging, in challenging more big bosses or kind of stronger enemies like the John Goodmans or the, the big fat flame dudes would come out and they would come from certain areas, but they may not have been in the normal version, in the regular version, but if you played on a higher difficulty, they would come out. That will not change. Those enemies will still come out. They just won't have more health and do more damage as they did previously. That is a very good thing and it is going to make it a lot easier for players solo or in a group to be able to do content and enjoy it the way that they want. So, good idea. How does it work with matchmaking? Yes, when you matchmake, you're only matchmaking for people in your tier. Okay. So in your current okay. tier, if you are in tier one, you are only going to matchmake with people in tier one. Okay. Right? You are not going to be able to matchmake with people in Tier 4. However, right. if you have a friend who is in Tier 4 and he yeah. invites you to your game, you can play with him in Tier 4 content and you'll get the same drops. Even yes. though so you can power level. Yeah. Even though you yep. couldn't be able to reach Tier 4 yourself yep. on your own. As but long as your friend invites you to his yeah. game. Okay, you can join him in yeah. his tier. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And you'll directly get the 229 items. But uh, coming yeah, exactly. Tier four. Okay. Exactly. So you yeah. can, and then you'll eventually unlock, you know, tier four yourself right. because yeah. you've been getting the sure. gear. Yeah. Matchmaking being a question, if you are in tier one world, then you can only matchmake with people in tier one world. It only makes sense. But if you have a friend in a tier four world, then you can matchmake with that person or be shuttled into their game, kind of like how. If you were a high dark zone rank, but your friend was not, they could join your game and enter that dark zone. Similarly, that's probably how this is going to work. So if let's say my friend is a um, 229 or 228 or somewhere around there, some high level, and then I just happen to be a 180 something, then he can send me an invite, I join his game, we play together, and all of that high end loot is going to fall. I can pick that up and level up. So you've ultimately just power leveled and skipped all of those other stages by having a friend. So if you have any friends who have not played and you want to get them kind of back into the division, this is going to be a nice way to tell them, hey, you don't have to grind as much as you had to. Just play with me and I'll get you there. And it's a good way to like help your friends catch up. Or if you play a little bit more than some of your friends, it's a good way to power level people and help them get to where they need to be. And everyone can enjoy the content together. It's a smart move. It works. I like it. Something we didn't talk about um, is that NPCs, elite NPCs, um, their behaviors have been improved. In from a lot of ways, from They're an AI perspective. From an AI perspective, okay. yeah. Yeah. So they, you'll kind of see them. They'll. Uh, we we wanted to kind of address difficulty in terms of more shooter challenge, Twitch challenge to the player, um, instead of just stat scaling. Yeah, yeah. So like we really wanted to you know kind of improve their decision making, make yeah. them a little bit more defensive of their lives, so they sprint to cover and they'll stay there as opposed to occasionally yeah. wandering out and shooting and. Um, they'll move a little bit faster. Yeah. They'll kind of do all of those things. Yes. All right. So a lot of people are very happy about that. This was probably my highlight for the entire thing. I have been talking for so long about the AI needing a buff. It's not good enough. And they do a lot of stupid stuff. Now, do I think this AI is going to be the ideal AI to do exactly what I hoped would happen? Definitely not. Is it a step in the right direction? Yes, of course. But I was hoping that the, I guess, pack would do a little bit more to keep the boss alive or to keep the higher ranking uh, NPC alive and do more maneuvers. I, I was hoping the entire group whether it be a low level, a purple, or even the, the yellow bar 
um, not bosses, I guess they're kind of like bosses or named, named enemies, would be able to do more work together and be a little bit more coordinated. Unfortunately, it's only going to be the kind of higher level the enemies. They're going to be a little bit smarter. They're going to be a little bit faster, a bit more defensive. They're going to sprint. They're going to run and do all that stuff, which is good. I'm not taking anything away from that. I am happy to hear that. I want to see more tactical play in the division. And this is a step in the right direction. And I'm happy about that. I can't wait to see it. And I want to play it. I, I want to play it now. And, and that's saying a lot because I haven't felt this good about wanting to play the game in quite a while. After hearing all that stuff, I really want to play 1.4 and see how much better the game has become. So this is uh, the time to kill uh, an NPC yeah. in, uh, you know, currently versus what it will be in 1.4. Exactly. I mean, you can see yeah. the 1.4 ones. It just really goes to show that we want to keep that as well as what I was talking about earlier, we want to make sure that as you level up um, and you fight harder enemies, not level up, as your gear reaches new levels yep. of awesomeness yep. and you start taking on those bigger enemies, yep. that the time to kill doesn't increase. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. So that's cool. And like you can see, there's, there's no orange bars for 34 and 35 NPCs <laughs> because they won't exist. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah exactly. That, that we didn't miss something out. They just they will not exist. So yeah, the idea is that if you have a gear score that actually matches the level of the NPC, no matter what's the level of the NPC, it's always going to be pretty much the same time to yep. kill. That's exactly. the idea. Uh, exactly. Which was not the case before, which of course was right. a bit weird. Right. So in this final graph, before we wrap it all up, they show us how the time to kill is the same if you are at the same level. So if you are a level 30 and you fight a level 30, it should take you nine shots to the chest to kill a grunt. If you are a level 33 and you're fighting a level 33 and it should take you nine shots to the chest to kill that same dude. Let's hope that this really goes over the way that they plan it because if it does, it'll make the game a lot more fun, uh, predictable, and you won't always feel like what happened. I'm looking forward to that. I'm excited. And again, this is this isn't 1.4 in its entirety. No, this is, there's this is an element yeah, of 1.4. This is yeah, yeah this yeah. is one of the big changes. There are other things, and there have been a lot of questions. There has been a lot of questions in the chat about uh, gear. What are we going to do to gear? Because you highlighted a lot of issues with gear, the gear scaling, the yeah. you know the mods, the contribution to all of yeah. that. We said we want to bring back the more of a shooter aspect. This is another part of the discussion. Uh, yep. This is another part of the big changes we're bringing with 1.4. Yeah. Um, so this is not something we will talk about today. Uh, but yeah, there will be another, uh, another discussion about this because there are also big changes coming out there. But the keeping in mind that the goal is that the experience is going to be much better. So I know that a lot of people said, yeah, but if, yeah. You're if you're reducing the health of the NPCs, I'm going to be completely OP and I'm going to wreck them. Right. That's part of the discussion. It's like, we don't want you to be, I mean, you can be completely OP at some point because yeah, you, yeah, I mean, if you, if you we, worked we, for this very good gear. We want you to be overpowered yeah, if you you're... Can, you can be overpowered. If you have overpowered gear. Right? If you have overpowered gear, exactly. But the whole, the whole uh, power between the player and the NPC is going to be completely different in 1.4. So yes. Yes. That's yeah. not, we're not just changing the NPCs. There will be changes as well to gear and player stats. Yeah, all the guys asking, I'm what about time. skill bugs and everything? Yes, there is a huge pass on bugs. Uh, we are just not Enormous. talking about it here. But yes, they are like we fixed many, many, many of them already, uh, and uh, yeah, there's yeah. You'll see the patch notes are just gonna be yeah. crazy. Oh my god! <laughs> you guys want details? You'll get details. Yeah. So 1.4 gear has more in store. These are not all of the changes that have been made. There are a lot more changes coming, and I'm looking forward to hearing what they're going to do with the gear, what they're going to do with the weapons. I know the weapon balance change is not gonna come for a while. As I said in my other videos, I'm expecting probably December, January, somewhere around there. Um, it's not going to be anytime soon, but the gear stuff will have to change. And I'm looking forward to hearing what they're going to do about that. And that's pretty much it. They're doing some bug fixes, but they didn't talk about it in this state of the game, which is fine. They talked about that last week. If you want to hear more about the bug fixes... I don't think they talked about every last single one of them, but they did talk in broad strokes about some of the stuff that was important to them. You can check out my previous State of the Game videos and see what they're talking about in that. 
Um, but other than that, aside from the long windedness and the kind of confusion because things were not really put in order properly and they just went off on tangents, it was a decent state of the game. They they laid out a few of the things that they wanted to talk about. Um, it was all right. It was good. Um, the changes that they're planning on making are very good. I'm looking forward to them. I'm more excited now for the division than I was two weeks ago. And for me, that says a lot because I was really starting to get down on the game. Uh, but now I can see how some of these changes will help solo players. And it'll make it an option to play the game even if my friends aren't on. And that was one big kind of um, kind of gripe that I had internally um, that I couldn't really play the game by myself. I had to play with somebody else um, just to even get anything done uh, or to enjoy the game. So now that they have these worlds and tiers, I'll be able to play whatever I want just if I want to shoot stuff and be a badass or I can try some challenging difficulty stuff and know that at the end of the day, it should be fair. It's a win-win. I just hope they can pull it off. That's all I'm saying. I don't have it in my hands yet. I can't give them credit. I just got to say, I hope it works out the way that they laid it out. On paper, sounds great. How will it go in your hands? What do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about this state of the game? Do you think the game will live up to what 1.4 is shaping up to be? Are you excited to play the game? Is there anything that you hope they would change that they haven't talked about? Uh, I know some people really want PvP to be a thing, but you're going to have to wait for that. Um, yeah, that's really all that was going on. I hope I could debunk some of the confusion if you were confused or still confused. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helps. If you did like it, remember to hit the like button on all of the videos uh, in this series because I have to chop all of them up. And it's time consuming. <laughs> it's not that easy. Uh, but it is it is good to hear from you guys and get your reactions. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you are most excited about. And do you think this is a really good step in the right direction? I'm pretty sure most of you will say yes. Um, because I know I think so. So, until the next video or the next set of videos, I am Khan, TDK, Mr. So Real. Remember to subscribe and hit that like button. Helps the channel. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.